Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about how to paint plein air landscapes. I went for a hike in the lowest hills near where I live looking for a nice scene to paint. I'm thinking of uh, this as a composition. I really like featuring this tree and I kind of want to get the pathway that leads down and uh, capture these shadows and just try to kind of create a sense of depth. So this is what I'm looking at. I did a, a quick thumbnail sketch and then uh, transfer the drawing to the canvas. I choose to wash the canvas with a reddish hue, in this case burnt sienna, to complement all the greens in the scene. At the end of the painting you'll see some spots where the underpainting or the wash of the canvas peeks through in between strokes of paint and uh, I find that it enlivens the final result. I draw the general shapes by looking at the negative space around the objects I'm painting and I'm focused on the shadow shapes primarily because I know with the changing light outdoors the shadows will actually move across the landscape and I don't want to be in a position where I'm chasing them too much so I kind of lock them in place at the beginning of the painting more or less with the sketch in phase. The shapes that hold the shadow are important because those shadow shapes are what will define the three-dimensionality as well as provide the sense of light. I really focus on trying to accurately measure out the color of all of the shadows and layer those in first because now that I've encapsulated the shadow shapes, I want the shadows to read accurately by having the appropriate value and temperature. So I'm looking at the shadow in the grass and asking not is it green, but I'm asking how dark is it? And I'm asking how warm or how cool is it? The shadows in the grass were actually fairly cool which would really help sell the sense of light with the warmer yellows in the grass. Also in general, the vertical planes are the darkest, the sky is the lightest, and the horizontal planes are the next lightest. Obviously not every plane conforms to that, especially in nature, but that's what we'll address after the block-in stage. The tree trunks, for instance, are supposed to be brown, but in my mind I'm trying to primarily look at them contrasted by the light coming from behind them to see if I can get the tonal value of those trunks as close as possible, as well as the temperature, meaning is it closer to yellow and red family or is it closer to the blues. Rather than thinking of all the complex values and temperatures, I primarily focused on the shadows first and now I'm laying in the lights. Since my shadows are in already, I can modulate the lights and use the darkness of the shadows as a reference point to help me get the lights the right shade of value. The sky is almost always the brightest source in a natural scene and it's where our light comes from so I paint it very light in value mixing it mostly with a white. Also this whole time since I'm going to go over my paint with another layer most of my paint is well thinned down with mineral spirits so that by the time I come over the top with those layers it will have dried somewhat. Even within my lights I'm cognizant that some lights are more cool than others. That focus on what are the lights that read as very warm versus very cool will help create not just a sense of depth which is my goal but also capture the essence of the scene. It's the feeling of standing there, that emotional aspect of trying to capture a sunny scene in nature. It's, it's the emotional context to light that is sold when we play off varieties of color temperature within a value range. That's why you can see me putting in some more orangey yellow greens in the treetops as well as more cooler greens. Both are in the light family of the tonal range, but I'm at least making color notes for myself to observe those subtle shifts in temperature as much as I can so that the sense of light and space, atmosphere, and emotion all read later on. Alright, so I've got it blocked in and it's very loose and sketchy and I'm just trying to get kind of the general light and shadow pattern and I'm relatively happy with how that's going. So now I'm going to go back in and just try to refine um, and kind of go back through that process of dark to light. I think I'm going to try and leave some of this transparency here. I like that. Um, but uh, leave it so that there's a sense of luminosity. Um, but yeah, just go back over again. We'll see what happens. Now up to this point we've been going through the process of going dark to light. Now I'm going to go through the same process again and do darks to light, but I'm refining things a bit more. I'm squinting less, I'm trying to add some of the value in the shadows that are in between my darks and my lights, and these are the planes that are in between vertical and horizontal. And so also their color temperature will be a little bit less cool or less warm than the perfectly vertical and horizontal planes. To a certain extent I'm reinforcing the darks and lights as well as refining edges so that my shadows and my light areas will read strongly and give a good sense of form when the painting is done. 
One thing I lost in the initial blocking stage was how there is a transparency in most trees. A tree is not just a solid mass like a rock, but you can see through it to the sky behind. I usually wait to the end to apply thicker paint that will go over the block in with something that is like my sky color. I tried to tone the color just a shade darker in value than the sky itself, and this has to do with the diffusion of light through the tree that a perception of the strength of the light diminishes as the sky peaks through the branches. All right, I'm done. Here's the finished piece. I think I like it. I like, I enjoyed this texture um, up here. Used the pout knife a little bit. And so overall, I think I'm pleased. So that's it. Try these tips when you go painting next time and let me know what you think in the comments. You have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you guys next time.